Hello, everybody. Welcome to a mini series that I'm doing here uh, that I'd like to share with you all. Now, uh, I think that it's a very important topic for anyone who really wants to get into min maxing the game, and that really is just discussing discussing how to use the Rain on X calculator. Now, this program is a tremendously powerful tool for all things Pokemon Sleep related. Uh, and a huge shout out to the team that have developed this uh, calculator. It is tremendous, the computation power that they have uh, been able to assemble with this uh, calculator and the things that it can do, uh, especially if you have the premium access to it. Now, I'm not going to be making videos about the premium features, at least not for this foreseeable future. I use the premium features quite a bit uh, on my own time, and I'm not going to be making a... A discussion about a lot of the functionality that's in here because a lot of it is just a glossary but I just wanted to show off the calculator now today I'm gonna primarily be focusing on the rate my Pokemon functionality or in this video at least and I'm gonna be getting to a few of these other ones uh, the ones that I think are the most important to have a good grasp of if you really want to min max this game but I'm gonna really focus on the rate my Pokemon feature today uh, a lot of these other ones are just glossaries or information, but really the ones that you want to be using the most are the Rate My Pokemon feature. The Pokedex tool is also pretty useful. Production comparison is, I think, the second most useful, and the third most useful. Actually, actually, no. I think production my, Rate My Pokemon is actually one of the less useful of these three. I think the most useful ones are the production comparison and the team analysis. Rate My Pokemon is useful for beginners. Uh, who don't necessarily know how to evaluate their Pokemon. I think it's a very good tool for understanding things. Now, if we want to use the rate my Pokemon functionality, I think really the whole concept is this thing's going to give you a number. The best thing is to just interpret that. It's difficult to interpret what those numbers mean, though. So I'm going to bring in an example. So you'll see this list of Pokemon here. It's every single Pokemon in the game. I typically recommend that if you're evaluating a Pokemon to just throw it in as its highest form. And you got to make sure that you have these settings correct. Now, you're going to want to make sure that you select the proper ingredient list. I'll use this Charizard as an example. Let's say you want you have an A, B, A Charizard. Now, this, that just means the ingredient list here. Uh, sausage, ginger sausage. You'll just select it right here. You'll go in and you'll tell it. This carry limit thing is actually kind of important for some Pokemon. Uh, basically, if you catch it as a Charizard, you'll leave it as it, at its base. If you catch it as a Charmeleon, you'll put it at the second one. If you catch it as a Charmando, you'll leave it at the third. Uh, most Pokemon you'll be leaving at just whatever its highest one is. Because usually you'll be catching Pokemon at base to evolve them up. But if you caught it at a higher tier, then bring it down one for every higher rank that you caught it at. Um... Additionally, if you are intending to put any main skill or main skill seeds into it, then put that here. Uh, that does kind of matter for evaluating later on, uh, and it can matter if, depending on how you're evaluating, particularly skill specialists. But uh, it is nice to consider. Now, nature. I personally find it easiest to go in here and like select oh it's got ingredient finding up xp gains down because i'm not one that has memorized all the different natures and sometimes i find it difficult to just look through here and click one but or like find the exact nature that i have and then select it but if you find it easier to just look at the list and be like oh yeah i found a, a timid charizard you just click timid and then it's there but you also can go about it by if you have a timid nature one you can click xp gains down speed of help up and that'll auto populate the nature Sub skills you go through and select what sub skills you found. So let's say I found the one with this sub skill, this sub skill, this one, this one, this one. And there you go. Now, here's where we get to the actual valuation. Uh, for most of the time, I'd say only go up to level 60. So this is a, a bar of how high you want it to evaluate to. Uh, most meta, the meta right now is all based around level 60. We're not really looking past that. Because we don't know exactly what's up there, and the calculator is only going to give you an estimate based off current projections. But sometimes evaluating past level 60 can have its merits, can have its value. So if you want to evaluate all the way to level 100, go for it and have it do that. And then you just click Calculate. Now, something else to consider. By default, on an ingredient specialist, it's going to evaluate based off ingredient strength. 
That's not the best way to evaluate ingredient specialists all the time, and I will get into that. I think it's a... Personally, I think the better way to... And you'll see that it'll just give you an output. Now, personally, I think the better way to evaluate ingredient specialists is to give it a bit more context. Uh, and I think ingredient count is a much better way to go off of this. I actually don't like that they removed... There was a feature here that was just total ingredient count, and we're just tell you what the hot the ingredient count is so really strength is the only way that we have to go off of for uh mixed ingredients but you got to make sure if you get into other tools that are on here make sure that before you evaluate based off ingredient strength that you don't have any uh meal bonus set unless you want it to account for meals um which it looks like i actually had meal bonus set so that was gonna skew things a little bit in favor of a ginger charizard i just made the mistake that i normally make now i thought this was a new account apparently i have messed with it before anyway so it'll evaluate based off of that i recommend though uh if you're playing heavily into the mono ingredient meta to always be using ingredient count a or ingredient count b depending on what you're evaluating based off of basically ingredient count a it's going to tell you what's the best how this ranks up to other Charizard and how much it produces sausage. If you click B, B, it'll tell you how it ranks up against other Charizards and how much ginger it produces. And if you select C, then it will tell you how much it's producing in terms of herbs compared to other Charizards. Now, um, you usually really don't want this one because usually the C ingredient is something that's a off meta pick. There are some value in some C ingredient lists, but generally speaking, you want to avoid the C ingredient. So you'll usually, if you're trying to stick to that whole mono ingredient meta, you'll be sticking to A or B. If you like a more mixed ingredient approach and you know what you're looking for in the ingredients list, uh, as long as you have the right ingredient list, you can then sort of evaluate by strength and that'll give you an idea of both combined. Now, now that we got the most complicated one out of the way to evaluate, let's go to the most simple berry specialist. I'm going to pull in a Raichu here. Uh, you can just put in whatever its ingredient list is, and then its sub-skills. We'll go with the same sub-skills, uh, because why not? And then, there are two ways you can evaluate a berry specialist and get an okay reading. Either by berry strength, or by total strength. I'm going to cut it back to just level 50 for now. Or, let's just level 30, so my computer can actually process it fast enough. I would recommend going beyond this, but as you can see, this would be a very bad Raichu. But that's really the only two ways you can evaluate it. If you're evaluating it by berry strength and berry strength alone, then it's not going to account for the value of raw ingredients that are put into it as well. And if you evaluate it by total strength, then it'll give you both berry value and ingredient value uh, combined in terms of raw. Me personally, I prefer the total strength option. I think using the berry strength option kind of misses the full picture of what they can produce. Um, but then, yeah. Now, evaluating skill specialists uh, is arguably even easier, but sometimes it takes a little bit more to consider. Um, on most skill specialists, you're just going to want to evaluate based off of expected skill count. Uh, like 99% of them, you're just going to want to evaluate based off expected skill count. But there is something else to be considered, um, and I will get into that. So, like this guy, you can see, not very good sub-skills for skills, but that's how you're going to evaluate them. Just overall, you just put them in, and then evaluate them. Uh, skill seed investment isn't going to matter on this one in particular, and that's where I'm like, okay, maybe it is worth considering uh, using a different evaluation that could be oh you can see that i'm on a free free to use account right now um it might be useful let's say you're going for a charge strength m or s pokemon like the gold duck uh evaluating it based off of total strength instead of expected skill count might give a better a little bit better of the full picture because the total strength is going to take into account the skill level as well as well as also berry production and ingredient production which while it makes up a minimal amount of their output, it does make up how a Pokemon can contribute to the team. So it might be better to go off a of total strength. But really the idea is to just understand what these different things are evaluating. Because if you just always select one, oh, it's a berry specialist and I'm just going to evaluate based on berries. 
you may not actually get <laughs> the reading that's going to suit you best. General rules, I'd say go total strength for very specialists. Um, go expected skills count for uh, skill specialists. And ingredient strength or ingredient count A or ingredient count B are going to be your best ones for ingredient specialists. Anyway, now that you know how to evaluate your Pokemon in the tool, let's get into how to actually read what the tool tells you. So, if I evaluate this Golduck, let's say based off of total strength, five skill seeds of investment, let's give him, I don't know, I'm going to give him a, a pretty decent set. So, we'll give him skill trigger M, inventory M, help speed S, and then just, I don't know, two other random skills. And let's evaluate him to level, we'll go up to 100 for giving this example. It might take some time, but I'll discuss a little bit of what the things mean before we get there. I didn't, oh, I gave him a bad nature. Okay, so he's not going to be the best Golduck. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can see here that we're getting multiple different levels. And basically what this is telling you is at that level breakpoint, how does it rank against other gold, other, all of their Pokemon of the same species? And realistically, this one's not that good. But the numbers you're going to want to focus on is the big one here, PR. If you have premium access, then probability is honestly a better rater or a better way to rate the Pokemon. But that's a whole different discussion. Free to play, you have access to PR or percentage, percentile. Basically, the whole concept is... If you had every single possible gold duck in existence, every single subskill list and nature possibility combo at this level, every single ingredient combo, where, how many of that Pokemon, what percentage of the total would be worse than the one that you've caught? And it tells you this at level 10, at level 25, at level 30, level 50, level 60, and if you put in the higher levels, level 75 and level 100. And then it shows you a little graph of how its percentile changes across the Pokemon's lifetime. Now, if you get one with a very high percentile early on in the game, then that means it's going to be a relatively strong option early game compared to what you could have elsewhere. Or compared to what you could have if you just kept catching. If you get a Pokemon that has, like, let's say low percentiles early on, but then spikes at, say, level 50... Well, maybe that's because they got a very valuable subskill at level 50 that's helping them out significantly. Um, let's say you have a Pokemon that just across the board is 99, 99, 99, 99. That means it's probably an instant invest <laughs> uh, in a very good Pokemon. Generally speaking, as far as percentile goes, um, I'd recommend like 90s, upper 80s is like minimum for investment in a lot of things, but... Depending on the context of your account, uh, you may have a higher or lower threshold than what I'm suggesting here. Um, and if you're early game, primarily look to what these early numbers are going to be. If you're looking for long-term investments, look at what these later numbers are going to be. As you can see, this guy, maybe he's an early investment just to get that level 10 skill trigger M. Uh, you wouldn't really do that with a skill specialist because they're a hefty investment with skill seeds, but aside from that... You could theoretically invest in this guy to have a very powerful skill specialist right away in the game uh, and use him even though he kind of curves off in the later levels. If you're looking at something like my Feraligator, I could bring him up as an example, but I'd not sign into that account. Uh, he's something that didn't get good until level 50 and then at level 50 skyrocketed. That was something I was willing to make the long-term investment on. So consider the context of your account when you're looking at the percentile of the Pokemon and where you're going to reasonably have it be anytime soon. And maybe if you have something that has a late game really high percentile, but an early game bad percentile, maybe don't throw it out, because maybe one day you could get it to be really, really good up there. So, that's kind of how to use the Rate My Pokemon functionality this thing. I think as you learn more and more about the game, you'll get a feel for what is good and what is bad, and you won't necessarily need to rely on this, but I think early game it's helpful and sometimes for making comparisons it can be useful but i do think that the production comparison and team analysis are better tools overall if you know the full picture for actually rating how good a pokemon is going to do on your teams and whether or not you should invest so 
yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned something, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. As always, I thank you guys for watching and hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.